The great and highly advanced Roman waterway system, known as aqueducts, are among the greatest achievements in the ancient world. The running water, indoor plumbing, and sewer system carrying away disease from the population within the empire wasn't surpassed in capability until very modern times. The aqueducts, being the most visible and glorious piece of the ancient water system, stand as a testament to Roman engineering. Some of these ancient structures are still in use today in various capacities. The aqueduct was a vital part of Roman culture during their great empire. It was their main source of water, and it allowed them to expand their territories because the aqueducts could carry water far distances. The aqueducts were built only to carry the flow of water in areas where digging presented problems such as valleys. The entire system relied upon various gradients and the use of gravity to maintain a continuous flow, and the engineering at the time was remarkable. Without the aqueducts, it would have been impossible to maintain the flow of water that the Romans required. Everything from public fountains, baths, and private villas was in the aqueduct network, and sometimes there was a fee. This water system was also politically motivating and inspirational. The Romans built many aqueducts to supply large cities or areas with water. Aqueducts would go through cities all the way to the mountains supplying people with a reliable water source. They supplied water for baths, drinking water, and were emptied into sewages. We use pipes underground to transport water from place to place for bathrooms, sinks, drinking water, showers, baths, and many other places where water is necessary. Because most aqueducts were underground, it took a lot of planning and prestige to build a successful aqueduct. The Romans had to measure the exact length of the structure and height of the structure, so the gravitational flow turns and basic turns and basic parts of an aqueduct work smoothly. After Nero and Domitian added to the Claudian aqueduct, it could reach all 14 districts of Rome and the Imperial Palace. It supported Rome with nearly 20% of its water. Claudius was a feeble man who did not possess social skills and hid in an apartment near the military. The military found him and decided to make him emperor. He lacked military skills and leadership ability, so his proposition for emperor was probably because of other German because of his brother Germanicus, who died but was very popular among the shoulders. They also believed that it would be easy it would be easy to control his decision making. The Senate did not have a say in the decision. The emperor this emperor inspired the Claudian Aqueduct. The Claudian Aqueduct was present and in motion in forty one to fifty four AD. It traveled through Rome and supplied water from as far as six miles back, and supplied water for fifty to sixty miles long, along with the other nine main Roman aqueducts. By employing above ground archways such as these, more than seven hundred engineers of the Imperial Water Service maintained a continuous slope from the water source to the gates of the city, and then relied on grav on gravity and pump houses to drive the water throughout the city, even uphill. Covered water channels were normally constructed of stone or brick. Lead piping was also employed to direct water to locations within the city. The water was distributed all over the city, even to the hilltops, and poured continuously to the main pub to, to many public fountains and the latrines of the public baths. The privileged had water brought to their residences by lead pipes and with some pressure. Aqueducts have inspired our water transportation systems today. We use pipes underground to transport water from place to place for bathrooms, sinks, drinking water, showers, baths, and many other places where water is necessary. The Roman aqueduct was a huge part of Roman culture and will always be a vital part of the ancient world.